What's up everybody, welcome back or to the channel. So today we're gonna to be doing a little maintenance on my 2019 Kawasaki Brute Force 750 right over here. So recently my CVT warning light has come on the dash and it's been staying on. Now I know there's ways to just go ahead and clear that light, but typically when the CVT warning light comes on, it's the computer telling you that you need to at least check the belt to make sure it's properly functioning or you possibly might need to replace it. Now I bought this quad used from a dealership and they got it in on trade. I don't know if they specifically replaced that belt or if it's still the factory belt because it's still a relatively newer machine. But with winter just right around the corner and I plan on hooking up a plow to this, I didn't wanna to have to take the chance of doing a belt replacement in the winter or out on the trail. So I figured I would just go ahead and replace the belt today and reset the light all at one time. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So without further ado, let's jump in and let's get this project started. Okay, so over here again is my 2019 Kawasaki Brute Force 750. So if we come over here and look on the dash, you'll see right up here, the CVT belt light does not go off. Even when I start it, all the lights go off except the CVT belt. So that light right there has probably been on for a few weeks now. I just haven't had a chance to replace the belt, but that's what we're gonna do today. So in order to replace the belt, we're gonna have to come over here and we're gonna have to take off this outer casing here probably disconnect a few things, take this outer casing off, and that'll give us access to our belt. Now let's go take a look at what we're replacing it with. Now, I did not go with a Kawasaki branded belt. I went with the Gates G-Force, but I went with the upgraded C12. The Gates G-Force belts come in three different levels. There's like your, your basic level, your midline level, and then a higher level. The higher level is primarily used for higher CC engines like 800 or 1000 and above. This one here is probably the best one to go with in my opinion because it's still relatively affordable and it's designed for a little bit more output that you're typically gonna get from a Kawasaki Brute Force 750. So right here is the code if you wanna look that up yourself, but I'll also put a link in the description of where I got mine. But overall, it looks to be a really good belt, okay? It's got a lot of good reviews on it. So we'll just have to see over time how well this one holds up. But apparently this C12 version of the G-Force belt is a much higher quality belt compared to the, the lower end level. So let's just go ahead and start tackling getting that side cover taken off and let's jump into this project and get it taken care of. Okay, so I went ahead and just took my foot well liner out. It's right over here. Very simple to take out. There's just a handful of little bolts like this that just screw in to these little clips all around the outer edges here. On the floorboard, there's typically three bolts that go one here, one here, and one over here, which would be these three little silver bolts like that. And then lastly over here, there will be a plastic just pressure clip here. Just looks like one of these little things like that. Okay, that's on the inside of your wheel well here at the front passenger wheel right down here. Once you take those couple bolts out, the foot well pops right out. This will give you a little bit more room and access to get around this area here. Now I did also take off this little clip right here. It's just a, basically a bolt, little metal clip that holds on this rubber hose right to here. So it's just one little bolt and then you can kind of reach back here and take it off. Again, just be very careful with it. It's very thin and brittle, but you could take that off. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the bolts around here. So let me finish doing that and we'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I got the bolts taken out, which are just these ones right here. Okay, there looks like there's four, eight. There's eight bolts and then there's this little basically bendy pinch clip that's right over here. Just kind of held in some of the wires right here and kind of looped them up and held them in place. But once you get all that done, looks like there's another bendy one right here. Okay, same thing. It just bolts up top and it just kind of folds over and holds those cables and wires in place. So now that we have access to our belt, I mean, we have a little bit of dirt and debris in there. It probably just fell off when I took the cover off. I mean. I don't know, I'm not a professional mechanic. I can't really tell 
what's good and what's bad. So that is normal to have a little bit of give. It's gonna give like that, but we're gonna go ahead and replace it anyways. So because this is a newer model, you're gonna need a clutch puller to actually pull this whole basket off. It's not easy. I don't have one, so I'm not even gonna try to figure it out because in order to take this off, you're gonna have to take this bolt here, turn it to the right while putting like a pry bar down through here to hold this basket from turning. You're gonna put a pry bar down there, you know, pry it up against the foot peg or something like that. Put a 19 millimeter socket on here, turn it to the right clockwise to loosen it, pull this big bolt out. Then you're gonna have to have a special clutch puller that's gonna have to go in there and actually de-thread this to get this basket off, which I don't have one of those. And I don't even wanna to try to order one because it's not like I'm gonna be doing this all the time. So to do it right, you should have a clutch puller to pull this basket off to do it the right way. But 99% of the time, people out there are probably just going ahead and prying it on like you do like an old bicycle chain. So what we're gonna do is, this is the old one here, we're gonna pry off, pop it off. We're gonna put the new one on by putting it over the front basket here first, getting it pried onto the top, and then we're basically just gonna take our hand or our pry bar and get this front basket to turn, and then that will get the belt to pop on along the bottom, and then it'll pop back on. You wanna to try to be as careful as you can with this. You don't wanna bend them or crimp them. You gotta be careful. So for me to take the old one off, there is enough flex in this. We're just gonna basically try to pry it off the back and pop it off. So let me do that, and we'll be right back. Just watch your fingers and be careful in here. All right. Okay, so we got the old belt off. It doesn't even really seem to be in that bad a shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably just keep this as a backup just for now, okay? But if we take a closer look at the new one, so as you can see here, they look very similar. This, this belt right here still looks relatively in good shape. So I don't even think it really needed replaced to be honest with you, but I'm gonna keep it as a backup anyways, and we're just gonna put the new one on for now. So get rid of the old one here for now, pack that away, and we're just gonna go ahead and put the new belt on the same way we took the old belt off. We're gonna slide it over the front and we're just gonna pry it on while turning it to get it to pop on. But before I do that, what I wanna do is just take some compressed air, okay? And just blow off some dirt and dust in here because you will get a lot of dirt and dust. I mean, you can just see over here on the case here, you will get mud and crud up in here like that. So you wanna make sure you go ahead and clean all that off as well. But just take some kind of compressed air if you can, blow some of it out like this. Okay, so you wanna go in there and clean a lot of the dirt and dust off of these. And then what you can also do is go take a little piece of steel wool and go in here and just kind of wipe off all that crud. Okay, let me see if I can get this. There we go. You see how dirty that is? But then look. Okay, see how much nicer that looks? So just go in there while you have this taken apart, blow out the old dirt, take some steel wool, clean it out, go in here with the steel wool and clean out the inside channel in here on both, okay? Just get in there and try to clean as much as you can. And once you're done, we'll put everything back together. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we went ahead with some steel wool. We got everything kind of cleaned out. We took some compressed air, blew all that out. I did disconnect my harnesses. There's just one little push button up top to release the small one. The other one, don't worry about the outside clips. There's a little clip right here on the inside. You wanna press up on it and slide that one out. And then we'll go ahead and clean those harnesses out here in a minute. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and slide our new belt on. You want your belt to have the name of the belt facing you so that you can read it just like this, okay? You don't want it backwards or upside down or nothing like that. You want the branding of the belt to face you. That's how you're gonna put it on. So in this way, so for now, we're just gonna go ahead, slide it over this clutch basket area here. We'll put it on the bottom now, because remember, we pried it off from the bottom before, 
Now we're gonna put it down on the bottom and get it to pry on by turning this clutch basket forward. So we'll go ahead, slide this on. It's gonna be tight. Always try to keep pressure on this side here so it doesn't buckle and turn. Sometimes it's easier to use, use a screwdriver in here as a little bit of a pry bar while you're holding this. Almost. Okay. All right, we're on. So then the next thing we want to do is go ahead and clean out our terminals here. Now I tend to like to use a product like this, the Deoxit D5. I use this for a lot of electrical harnesses because it does a really good job at cleaning the harnesses and removing oxidation. It really just improves the overall electrical connectivity. So all you gotta do is go up in here like this, spray it out, and then let it kind of drip dry. We'll set that over there like that, okay? Then the next thing we gotta do is I'm gonna go in here, probably just with a rag and some compressed air and try to clean a little bit of that crud out of there. So let me go ahead and wipe that out, clean that out, and then we'll start putting everything back together. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I just went ahead and I cleaned out the inside of the basket here just with a, a paper towel and a little bit of WD silicone in here and just kind of cleaned it out a little bit. I sprayed a little bit of the WD silicone down on the spring housing over here. And then I just went ahead and used the paper towel in there to kind of dry and wipe things off just to make sure that that's properly lubricated. So now that we have this pretty much cleaned up, all we gotta do now is place this housing back over top of everything bolt it back down, we'll reconnect our harnesses, and then we'll have to tackle resetting the warning light for the CVT belt on the dash. So we'll come back and do that in a minute. But for now, the new belt is on there. Again, the harnesses are drying from using the Deoxit D5 to clean those harnesses out for a better electrical connection. And we'll go ahead and get this all mounted and put back together, and we'll be right back in a minute. Okay, so now that we got the cover put back on, we got our rubber boot up here slid back over with our metal clamp holding it back on. Got that done. We got all eight bolts going around the whole perimeter. We got those all mounted and I did put a little blue Loctite on each one of those bolts. Okay, so we got all that done. We did use some of the Deoxit D5 here, which removes oxidation and does a really good job at cleaning electrical connections like this. So we cleaned all those out. Then I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of dielectric grease and just put a tiny bit on my fingertip and rub it on the outside of this terminal here just to make sure we have a nice connection with our electrical connections. So now that we got all that done, we can go ahead and hook up our electrical connections again. I think this one goes to here like this. Okay. This one will go to here, like that. Okay, now we've got a good connection. So what I'll do is I'll then tuck these wires back down under here using this metal tab right here that I'm touching with my finger. Remember, this bends. So you're just gonna tuck your wires in there and then bend that tab over. The same with this metal tab up here. It goes around these couple wires here, just like this. If I get my hands up here. Okay, you're just gonna bend that metal tab, just like that. And it goes over top of those wires. We're gonna do the same over here with these wires here. So once I get done tying those wires up, we're gonna go ahead and start tackling, turning off that CVT warning light. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so now that we got everything put back together, we got the new belt on, we got everything cleaned out, we got everything lubricated, everything is good to go. Now we gotta go ahead and restart the actual CVT light that lights up over here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this middle one. So there's a two wire harness right here, right in the middle. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect that. Okay, so all you wanna do is 
disconnect this little plastic tab here. Allows you a little bit more flexibility with your middle harness. Pinch your clip, pop it out. Okay, then you wanna go ahead and take your jumper cable, which is up front here. It has a little red tab on it. So we'll just go ahead, disconnect that one. Okay, finally. These are a little bit tight, so just be careful. You're just gonna basically push that pressure pinch clip right here on the side end and pop it out. This piece here is just a casing that kind of holds it there like that. So this little piece here is what you want. It has the red tag on it. You're gonna go ahead, plug that in to this middle piece here that we unplugged the black harness from. So plug this gray one here that was up here with the red tag, plug that into the middle one. Then you're gonna come back down here and unplug this. Okay, so this one right here, you look underneath, there's a little push button towards the back. You press that in, unplug it. So all you're doing is unplugging that. So remember, you wanna take your middle harness or the two wire harness, okay, that look like that. Unplug it from the middle harness or the two wire harness that was holding it. Take your red tab harness out of the front here. There was just a, as a spare, plug that in there. That's a loop. So what you're doing is you're plugging that in there Disconnecting that there. Then we're gonna come up here and turn the ignition switch to on. Let it run its course. That should start blinking slow, which it is. We'll let that run for a few seconds or so. Maybe until the fan shuts off. Give it another minute here. I'm just basically waiting, all right? The fan calmed down. That should be long enough. Let's go ahead, turn the key back off. Okay, we're gonna disconnect that. We're gonna come back down here, plug this back in. We're gonna come back up here, disconnect that, replug everything back in the way it was, and then we'll start it up and check the lights. So let me do that, I'll be right back. Okay, so we went back. We got the bottom plug right here, plugged back in, came up here. We plugged the harness back in the way it was. We put our spare loop plug back to where it was. Come over here now, turn the key to on. CVT belt went out. Let's go ahead. Start it up. No lights are on, so it looks like we reset it. So we're all good to go there. So the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is put my floorboard liner back on, and then we're gonna go take this for a quick ride. I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, so I got my camera mounted to the handlebars of the ATV. Let's go ahead and start it up. Now, before we start moving forward, one of the most important things to do after you have changed your CVT belt is to break it in nice and slow. You gotta get it broken in before you really start going out there and banging out those gears. So what you gotta do is just go out, ride around for five or 10 minutes, go up a few gears, down a few gears, and just get the belt warmed up and moving and get it broken in. Once you break it in for about a good 10 minutes, then you can go out and crush it on the trail. So let's go for a quick ride up in the woods and we'll go ahead and break ours in.
go out here into the field. Now my neighbor that lives up there, he owns this field. And I usually ride up and down just along this side here. My neighbor has a hunting blind right here. You get some pretty good deer out this way. I just like to go out on the ATV and ride around in the woods. Check out this view. All right, here we go. Let's get on here and ride around a little bit more. And I love this ATV. I've always been a huge fan of the V-Twin ATVs. And I gotta say, I always love this quad. It is a very strong, fast, powerful ATV. So when I had the chance to buy this one, I jumped on it, and I couldn't be happier. Let's head back to the woods over here. I still have a bunch of clearing to do over here because this has all just been overgrown and wooded. But slowly but surely, I'm getting a lot of these trails opened up. Go a little faster. back that way about another 20 feet or so that's where the other property starts but I do have plenty of trails cut down over there already it's just the hunter that leased it for now doesn't want us over there because he doesn't want us scaring away any deer that he plans on hunting I have all these trails cut down this way so hopefully next year if I'm able to lease that property again we'll make some really cool videos on some ATV trails back that way because there's about another 20 acres worth of trails but for now, let's just ride around here a little bit, get this CVT belt broken in. Okay, so we got everything kind of broken in now. Let's go ahead and get some speed and have some fun. Let's rip it up.
Okay, so as you can see here, the CVT belt light is gone and we are good to go. Okay, everybody, so we are finally done. We went ahead, we took the outer casing off. We got the old CVT belt removed. It really wasn't even in that bad a shape, but I went ahead and replaced it anyways. We got everything cleaned out. Using a little bit of compressed air, we got everything cleaned out. We went ahead and cleaned our terminals with some Deoxid D5. Got everything hooked back up, got the new belt put back on. Again, I do recommend using a clutch puller and doing it the right way, but that's a lot of work and not everybody has a clutch puller. So I just went ahead and did it the old school way where you just basically kind of pry it on and pry it off. It works fine, you just gotta be careful. Don't use too many tools to really pry the new belt on because you don't wanna take any chances of damaging the belt. But if you do kind of get it pried on there and you turn the basket as it's turning on, you should be probably fine. So we've got everything put back together, everything's clean, everything's mounted. We went ahead and used our jumper cable under the seat to reset our CVT warning light. So once we got the CVT warning light reset, we put the seat on, we made sure everything was cleaned up and put back together. Then we went ahead and took it on some trails and just drove it lightly. You have to break in your CVT belt slowly. Again, nothing major, just go out for about 10, 15 minutes or so. Go up the gears a little bit and come down the gears a little bit, but don't do it full punch throttle. Do it slowly and gradually. After about 10 to 15 minutes, after that belt has been broken in and warmed up a little bit, then you can go hit the trails and blast it and have some fun. So that's what we did and everything worked great. The CVT light is no longer coming back on and we are good to go. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope this video helps some of you out. Do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button, like this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you, I truly appreciate you all. And as always, See you in the next video.